this one. I'm glad I'm glad we did this, man. I, I love just doing what we do and making it happen impromptu. You know what I'm saying? All right, here we go. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. What's up? It's your boys. My man, all the way there in the West Coast, three hours behind me, Jay Halim, the master of preventing starvation, the author of The Movement, I Won't Starve, and your boy C.L. King, your friend C.L. King here. We are in joint studio sessions today because I messaged him last night. I said, Jay, what you doing tomorrow? This is literally how it went, y'all. I said, what you doing tomorrow? He said, I don't know what you got. I said, man, we need to go live. He was like, what time? I said, well, I'm three hours ahead of you, and I got stuff to do after three. So we need, to, we need a short block of time. He said, I got you, man. And here's why I said it was important for he and I to come together. Number one, because this man has a, a passion and a talent for entrepreneurship unlike any person I've ever interviewed we've interviewed almost 300 people since we started this podcast and I have never interviewed someone and becomes friends with someone who has such a gift for describing and maneuvering and helping people understand entrepreneurship and so I said, bro, I just want to come on and maybe if we can get some people that that uh, that might be, I know everybody probably still at work. We're doing this at a crazy time. But they can watch the replay and ask questions later. You know, I said, maybe if there's some people out here, because there's some folks struggling. You know, there's folks struggling. Inflation, there's all kinds of stuff. And I said, man, Jay, give me one hour to pick your to pick your amazing brain and then we'll get out of Dodge. So we, you got us for 50 Oh, man, you got us for less than that. You got us for 48 minutes. Then I got to get to the to the ball field, and he got to go back to he got to go back to work because he can't starve. So, with that, I'm gonna uh, hey y'all y'all the, the band y'all can call the band off. We good. I want to thank everybody for being here, joining with me and Jay Halim there at, in our joint studio session together. Jay Halim, the president and founder and CEO of I Won't Starve. He's got four books. He's an uh, serial entrepreneur and uh, an amazing human being. That's what Misi and I was talking about because we talk about you behind your back. So that's how, <laughs> that's how you know what your friends are, what they say about you in the, when you ain't in the room, bro, you know? That's what I'm talking about. I yeah, take it. She said, uh, yeah, she said one thing. She said, Jay is so humble. And I said, yeah, somebody's so smart, but he delivers it with such grace and humility. Uh, that's important. So I want to get right to it, bro. Here's the reason why I felt like we needed to come together. First of all, I want you to tell everybody, just give kind of give kind of a snapshot of the four works that you have produced that you that you've uh, publicized your four books and uh, tell us, a, give us a snapshot of each one of them real quick. Uh, they, they look behind me, they can see a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't starve, you won't starve. I, I go in, in order. Actually, I just Got them handed to me. <laughs> All right, there we go. So there's I Won't Starve right here um, from Eight Dollars and Six Figures, which is pretty much telling my story of me um, starting, you know, working for eight dollars, and um, you know, in a couple years after that, becoming a six-figure earner. And um, right at the beginning of when I created I Won't Starve the company, um, that's where that book ends. And then I created You Won't Starve, Key Principles of Entrepreneurial Development, which is the one that's directly behind me. Um, this is my training manual. You know, it's responsibility for us to, once we figure out system, give it to other individuals. So I was talking about it while I was working $8 an hour, literally was talking about this stuff on YouTube, but nobody paid attention. So once I got a little bit of steam behind me, I put it in the book and now they had to pay for it. So <laughs> that, worked out. that worked out, you know. Um, Morning motivation, key principles. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm about to say key principles. But consistent encouragement through a crisis. If you keep writing books, you're gonna forget the titles. Forget how to say the titles too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> consistent encouragement through a crisis. Again, this book was about me being in the space where, um, you know, just listening to all the negativity during the pandemic and the height of the pandemic, and talking about throw 2020 away and. Forget this, forget that. And I'm like, hey, you know, it was a crisis, but it wasn't our first and it's definitely not going to be our last. 
How do we consistently stay motivated throughout the crisis, no matter what happens, especially as entrepreneurs? Because oh, I'm just looking. I'm I'll, I'm always watching the stock market, and I just watch these banks go in 2.2 seconds. You know, mm-hmm. that didn't have anything to do with any calamity right now. You know, it's just business cycles and things don't go the way you you wanted to go. And next, you know, your business you're out of business or your business is trading from 200 percent to you know five percent. So we have to realize how we got to stay motivated no matter what that looks like. And then my my most recent baby, my last baby business corner was really needed to survive the entrepreneurial fight. My best work, um, in my opinion, and it's it's the truth, you know, um, we started from soup to nuts, from the beginning of starting a business to when you grow a business enough to be able to sell it and who you need to have in your corner, why you need to be in your corner and how you can actually be successful and not be in that number, that statistic of most businesses that start will fail and won't go past five years or X amount of years. Right. This book will teach you how to do that. Yeah, and uh, you know, I told him, I said, look, I, we wanna, I wanna get some tips, uh, not, not too many, cause I want you to buy his books. Where can he get your books from, brother? I won't starve.com, go to I won't starve.com or anywhere books are sold, my books is pretty much everywhere on the planet at this point now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, but they, you know, I get the most money if you go to IWon'tStop.com. And I'll sign a copy for you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Look, I got the pen right here, dog. That's what I tell somebody, somebody told me the other day, yeah, I picked up your book. I said, I ain't get no notification. They said, yeah, I picked up your book. I said, where you get it from? I said, she said, Amazon. I said, mm, well, most of the money went to them and I can't even sign it for you, sister. So that's the same thing I do. I, that's that's business thinking right there. But it's also the whole thing, like what, what Jay, Jay Halim, uh, Jay said, he said he wants to sign it. And uh, I sign and pray over every one of my books that I send out. I sign them. And uh, that's an important part of that customer connection. And so, you know, I saw this, this, uh, congressional inquiry the other day this lady was questioning some rich bank dude i don't know if you saw it but she was she was questioning this guy saying how can you make this work for a lady who earns forty thousand dollars so she started breaking down all of this woman's expenses and she was negative twenty five hundred dollars in the hole based off of just basic living Right. You know, you talk about rent, average rent in California. I think that's where she was talking, blah, 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 blah. So um, one of the things that that I I think people maybe struggle with is because I know you talk and you got a great doctrine about, hey, look, while you're building your business, get a job and work it. Right. Be on somebody's clock. There ain't no shame in that. Right. But if you're drowning. At your job. Right. Um, what is it that, uh, what, what's the first thing that a person would, would want to do if they're like, man, I really want to do more. I want to do something for myself, like a tip that would help them like, okay, how, well, how do they need to be positioned? Do they need to get a business loan, go back to school? What, what is it that you would say to a, a very, you know, a person in that situation who's kind of underwater, they got a talent, a gift, a bill, an ability that, uh, they can't quit their job today, but they want to get started on, on their dream. What, what would you, what would you advise them, Jay? That's a great question. In this book right here, I put my first principle is hustle while you work. You know, we all have a skill set. We all have something that we can do. Maybe we fry chicken the best in our community. You know, maybe we like to, um, you know, put on events. Right. You know, maybe we, you know, um, maybe we make baked goods or whatever better than everybody else. We got to stop giving it away and we got to go ahead and start selling it, you know, and at that job, you spend more time at the job than you do at home. So if you make the best, if y'all having potlucks at work and you, they always ask you to bring your apple pie in, that means that somebody is willing to pay you for the apple pie. Now that can change your financial situation without you having to um, get any more money or do anything else to stress yourself. Next thing I'm telling you to get a better job. A lot of times we get a job. I say, I have a saying and say enough is not, just enough is never enough. Right. And so we get jobs wanting to have just enough. Well, 40,000 is just enough, but that's just enough for today. Yeah. With inflation, and that's going deep saying inflation, but let's just understand if I'm single and I don't have any children, 40,000 is cool. But once I bring that woman in, 40,000 is not cool no more. <laughs> once the kids come around, 40,000 is not cool no more. Right. You know so life itself, you have to continue to grow. And inflation is going at three, four, five percent anyhow. So 
you have to, my old, my first apartment is so funny. My first apartment was $400. Oh. That same apartment is $800. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, so even without doing anything, and it looks worse than it did when I got it back in the day, that complex looked like crap now. So <laughs> at the end of the day, I didn't have to do anything but just keep living and to see that I was going to have to spend more money. And so we have to always be thinking about having more than enough. To get an apartment, we need to have three to show that we make three times the amount of money. Well, I like we should be supposed to live that way. We supposed to live in saying, I need three times the amount of my expenses in my bank account so that I can live comfortably. Yeah, you see, and that I, man, I tell you what, that's goodness. I'm my let me tag. I see Tamika uh tagging people. Let me go ahead and tag my daughter because she my daughter at that at that friend's edge right now. She's getting her money together, and I'm like, get your money together so you can get up on out my house, girl. Uh, but no, that that's right. And when you when you look at it, I was when you said four hundred dollars, I'm tripping, Jay, because years ago, what was it back in two thousand, maybe two thousand, two thousand one. We moved in a in a in a double in a single wide trailer, brother. Single wide trailer. We thought we we thought we had, but we had upgraded to a nice single wide trailer. You know, with like one of them big old garden tubs in it. You know, and uh, that was four twenty five a month, right? And I and I was just like, okay, well we we can, you know, because I, I went from three seventy five to four twenty five. I was like, oh my goodness, man, how are we going? We want to really tighten this budget, right? <laughs> man, if I was living. <laughs> Jay, if my mortgage was 425 bucks a month, I'd be driving around a Lamborghini. Mm, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what I'm and no, you're absolutely right. right. And that, that's that's what people got to understand. It's going to grow. If the, the price is going to go up just to live. You bought yeah. eggs lately? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I be holding on to them eggs. I done boiled them things so I can have me two or three slices of the egg at one time. <laughs> and, and so so when, when you... But now think about this, because I was homeless for several several months. When I talk about this in my book, uh, as an eleven year old kid, and I just dealt with what what really kind of the Holy Ghost kind of triggered me to to call you yesterday was I just dealt with the 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 jail the mem- the men in the jail on F block. I talked to them about appetites, right? And there ain't nothing like being hungry. Mm. I know it was like to starve because I was severely malnutrition. But when you were in that position, Jay, because I want to get you, I want to get your mental piece behind this too. When you were in that position that says, okay, I'm making eight bones an hour, but I'm I'm refusing to succumb to hunger. I'm not going to starve. What was your what was what was the mentality that you adopted, brother? Because that's the, that's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to live it. Help us with your mentality, so somebody out there who's listening to this now can understand that it's not just about catchy cliches, which I know you're not doing. But what I'm saying is, I want them to understand that there's a mentality that's associated with getting out of starvism. Oh no! Um, be perfectly honest with you. I just was pretty. It was a middle finger to everybody. I have been taken advantage of, man. Like I've been used. I've been mistreated. I've been all of those things at that time because being an entrepreneur, I'm so passionate about being an entrepreneur and helping other people in the entrepreneurial space because every bad portion of the situation, I got it. Especially with dealing with people. Yeah. And you know, me being a believer, a lot of that came out of people in the church. Ooh, okay. So so-called individuals who were supposed to be saved, you know, that I was around. And so at this point, because I was I'm a felon, I've been a felon since I was in college, and I had people telling me to go get a job, and I went to go get the job. They wasn't giving me the job. So I went full-time in entrepreneurship. And I had just got back to South Carolina and um I was trying, I was trying, I was trying things, I was doing things, and it just wasn't working. And um, when I took this final time taking an eight dollar an hour job, I just that was what it was. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna make this work regardless of what. And I, that wasn't the only thing I did. That's why I don't tell people, like, okay, well, that's not enough. But yeah, when I worked um 40 hours with for eight dollars an hour, but then a, a brother I went to college with had a car dealership. He knew I had a background. I I respected it. He said, well, you can't sell, but I'm you could come with me and get cars from the auction. So I would go with him and get a car from the auction, $100 just for bringing the car back. I would be there for that. I sold bootleg movies. I had a table at the flea market. You know what I mean? I did all of that while I was making my $8. My $8 hour check went straight to my wife. Yeah. I said, look, you take all of that $1,000 a month that I'm going to get. Our rent was seven something. 
you know, and that's renting the lights. I'll get the rest while I'm out here doing this other thing. So I know that $8 wasn't enough. She's pregnant with my son. Yeah. I know that wasn't enough, but I said, okay, I'm going to do this while I do this. Now, did I stay at $8? No. When I left that job over a year later, I was at $14, but yeah. I'm hustling on a job. I worked. I was the first one there, last one to leave. I, I performed at a high level. And so I continued to grow in that space and in the other things I was doing. And not to mention, I was a photographer. I was beginning my business as a photographer. So I was always already shooting on the side, you know? So like I had to get the job to anchor me even at $8, but it didn't stop me from doing the other things. But I know I needed something that I can guarantee that was coming into my household at the time. We couldn't get food stamps. We couldn't do anything at the time. So, you know, we just had to figure it out. But so that was my mindset, like middle finger to everybody. Everybody wanted us to do what they wanted us to do. We were told to move, go, come back, leave South Carolina, go back to this place, go back there. I said, whatever's going to happen right now, me and God had a conversation, it's going to happen right here. If it ain't going to happen right here, it's not going to happen. Oh. All right. So now, look, ladies and gentlemen, you tuned in. I just, I'm just going to get a show to uh, Jay Haleem. This is Jay Haleem's show. I'm just his co-host today. Me and me, me and this brother have, have connected through my cousin, Nisi Jordan. And I'm just going to tell you. Yeah, that's my good. That's my cousin. She up there somewhere right now in Michigan. She had. Do you did you see her post on her um the, her little thing she did her little interview or whatever for her book? It's over. It's almost at three million views. Wow. wow. I told her. I said. I told her. I said. See, sister. And it was. She just had submitted a little email to some company, and uh, she. They said, "Oh, we we love your story," and it's done exponentially been seen. I told her. I said, "Look, just when you think." Ain't nobody listening. Just keep on. I said, just keep on dropping it. Keep on. That's what she do for everybody else. That's where yeah. that's coming from. Because she do that's so much for everybody else. She give a lot of people uh, on her platform to give. Um, you know, so that that's what that's about. She's reaping. She's reaping. Definitely what what she has sold. Now, here's what I, I. You know, I don't know if you know what happened with Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. 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 Watch that, it close. The 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 coupons is not going to be good here shortly, bro. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> When we talk about entrepreneurship and business owning and getting out here, getting after it, one of the things that, that you mentioned in your in your opening remarks is, you know, about the business life, you know, like how long, a, a, you know, the, if, if the statistics say your business won't go past this amount. Yeah, uh -huh. What mm -hmm. is, what, help us. You don't have to give it. I don't again, I don't want you to give away the they whole thing. They can have it. Let's see. That's, that's, it <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Uh, just go to jhaleem.com or I won't starve.com. Either one. Either one. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll take you right there too. But my point is, I'm thinking about this myself. I've I've made some shifts even in what I do because I started realizing that everything is dependent on me. Not that I don't have people helping me, but I'm just like, I'm the voice, I'm the image, I'm the spokesperson. I'm, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I just had a medical issue uh, not too long ago where I had to be down. And so kind of like everything was grinding to a slow stop. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Thank God I had a, had stuff already in the queue, but I'm like, you know what? I, I don't want this, this, what I'm doing to be only with me. You know what I mean? And I, I bed bath and beyond been around 50 years. I like to have a business that's, that's running 50 years, but evidently they did something or didn't do something that in 2023, they're, they're no longer needed at the table. So, Jay, because you're the expert, brother. I'm just a speaker. I'm the John the Baptist. You're the, you're the, you're the, the intellectual. Don't go, yeah, don't go too deep with that one. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, or what are some keys or tools when somebody's like, okay, I'm mapping out my business. I'm blah, 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 blah. What, what should we be doing, Jay, to make our business recession proof and make it so it it's going to go past just us. What are, what are some thoughts you got on that, bro? And what have you been teaching? Man, you got to pay attention to the signs and you got to be okay with, you know, stepping away from the business because a lot of times individuals start a business and they can't see the ending of it. Like in my book, my last book, I talk about selling your business. You, you have to, we make, we create businesses to sell now. Now, Bed Bath and Beyond was a public is a publicly traded company, so right. they have sold. So what starts to happen is you get CEOs 
and they get new CEOs and new CEOs after 50 years, it's probably multiple CEOs that have been through that company and they're, un- they're out of touch with the founders. They're out of touch with what's, what, what, what was fed the founding principles mm. of the company. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times the founding principles are the things that last the longest, you know? But when we bring new other new individuals in and start in and you start having your own vision that's not in tune with the original vision, then it goes away. And those things might not be built to last. Your vision is just for what you see. And then, you know, with, with those major companies, and I haven't been blessed yet to start nothing that big, but what I've seen from my study, and I invest in these companies because I'm an avid investor and, and I play the stock market. So I'm paying attention to a lot of the trends that's happening. You know, we talk about Blockbuster. You know, they saw what was happening with Netflix. They didn't move. Kodak, they saw what was happening with these other companies. They didn't move. So a lot of times they're like, we're good where we are. People are going to always want to come into the store and just be Marvel. Like Bed Bath & Beyond costs a whole lot more than a lot of the places to yeah. get what you got. And you have people on the cloud like an Amazon who you can just get the same thing from there and send it to them. They're not price. They're not price matching like Best Buy or price match what's on Amazon right. to make sure that they're safe. You know, other people. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. can still come in here and talk to me because you can't walk into Amazon and talk to nobody. But if Amazon has something that's to my price, I'll well, less than my price. I'll match it yeah. so that you still can get my customer service, but you will still get the price point that you want if you do the due diligence and bring me an Amazon. Um, receipt, not a receipt, but just show right, me on, right, hey, right. this is on Amazon. Right. They, they're like, hey, people are going to still be there. People change. Sometimes your client and your customer is timed out. You know, they're at retirement age. The person who was at 50 years, think about 50 years. Right. That person was 25 years old when they started. It's 75 now. They're, they're not know. shopping like they used to shop. No. And what did you do for the person that's 45? That, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. What what would you do for the person that was 15 years old or that was 10 years old when you opened? What did you do for them? What did you do for their children to mm. be ready? You have to start creating things for their children. That is so true, man. Let me let me interject there. He brought up some good companies. Uh, one he he <laughs> I watched the documentary on uh, Blockbuster. I think there's one. I don't know if it's still open, but there was one last blockbuster open in America. I think that was what the documentary was on. Like they are still open, right? It was the only one left out of all of the blockbusters. And it was more of a, like a historical kind of thing. Like, okay, this is a, this is a landmark. But when, like you say, who was it? Did Blockbuster have an opportunity to get in on Netflix, or maybe it was another company? But I yeah, thought they, I, they 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 was around for all of it. They you know they could have got got Netflix. They could have bought in. They could have did the same situation. I saw it, it was sad because my wife worked for Blockbuster when she had senior year of college, and we started seeing. And the funny thing is, I wish we'd have got the stock back then. Yes. but she started that is a place called Netflix, and. He would get the DVDs sent in the mail. You get three at a time. Right. You had to send them back, and then they'll send you another three that's in your queue. And right then and there, then I remember Blockbuster trying to do that, like a last ditch scenario, but they were done after that point. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's like, uh, no, sorry. And now, now you don't even have to leave your house. You know, I thought Redbox was pretty innovative. And now the Redbox little stations look like they've just been abandoned. Ain't nobody even using yeah, them. Yeah, no exactly. Because Blockbuster did a Redbox. They used to have Blockbuster boxes like Redbox for a while. Yeah, yeah. So so that that just that just triggers something. You see, I, We're talking about two different – I got two different – parallels going on in my head here y'all so y'all just work with me but one thing jay said was you got to know hey man if it's time to sell your business right there's there's one thing you got to be hey man you might build this business to a certain point and then and sell it off and you got your you got your royalties for the rest of your life or whatever but then there's another there's another piece of that lane that's like hey look you got to understand where society's going yeah, yeah. Right? I saw a lot of speakers go out of business because all they could do was brick and mortar speeches. That they they relied one hundred percent on that. Well, and this is the thing, though. Also, you think about companies like Starbucks. You think about companies like Apple. Some these are people who their CEO came back multiple times because they had to be piped into the source. Yeah, it had to be piped into the founder because the founder had a vision. 
Yeah. You're bringing the company in, you sell it, you make it public, and you're bringing in operations people. They're able to look at what you have and make it work like a well-oiled machine. But a lot of them don't have vision. Right. So you fight back into either, if you like, some of those people are dead now, but who was around <laughs> yeah. at that time? Right. Who was around that can coach us or can consult us so we can get a vision for what's going on next? These, these companies are amazing for a reason because of a vision. And yeah. then they've been on, on autopilot for 15, 20 years with these people just running the day to day, but that vision has to be inserted again for what's coming down the pipe. Yeah, and when you, so, just, you know, we so um, detached from the visionaries. It's hard for you to go long term because you got to see stuff that other people don't see. You got to see things around the corner. Yeah. And those individuals who are just running the show, it's certain people who cannot get a vision to save their life. But if you line them up with everything, they'll run it like a well-oiled machine. Right. Yeah. But you, you, you said something great here, you know, an entrepreneur or business owner of, of is, is also a visionary. You know what I mean? Like I, I've, I've, I've been talking to my team about, like I said, like the five, 10 year vision. It's like, Hey, look, we gotta, we gotta make sure I, I, I did a post today on AI. Cause you know, everybody's, everybody's on the AI bandwagon, right? Everybody, every, every, I said, I did make, I made a post and said, listen, AI can't write no speech like CL. I don't, I don't care what y'all say. I'm I'm still going to be doing my own speeches now, but, but there's some cool stuff about AI. And here's one thing that, you know, here's what I want to, this next point I want to ask you, cause I'm, I'm doing a, um, uh, can you get paid to speak? Or can you get paid as a speaker? I'm doing a little free workshop coming up in June and everybody kind of subliminally asks me or will ask me indirectly or off offline in the DM. Well, how do I get into this and how do I convert to paid speeches? And it's not, brother, it's not just a switch. Like, you know what I mean? It's not a switch that you just turn on and say, okay, I was speaking for chicken dinners yesterday. Now today is $7, a 7,000 a speech or I ain't coming. It, that, that is, there's no switch in, in the industry like that. Do you agree with me or no? No, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's just one of those things that you got to make up your mind that you believe in yourself and you believe that people need to be paying for you. How I circumvented the system is that when I started speaking, when I decided I want to speak, I created my own event and I charged, I charged admission for it. That, that, you see, he must be looking over my shoulder, ladies and gentlemen. I got the prophet Jay Halim in the room because this is exactly what we just told our team. But yeah, no, I did it. I did it yeah. multiple times. I did it multiple times. I said, hey, we're going to do this. I brought some other speakers with me. Yeah. And I headlined and I charged $50 cover and everybody paid. See, and, and that's the thing is that uh, this is one thing I'm going to talk about in my, in, my, in my training is that sometimes you can't sit around and wait for somebody to call you or see if you can qualify for their event. Yeah, I wasn't doing that. I, <laughs> I, I, I saw too much of it because, again, being a photographer, a commercial photographer and corporate photographer, I'm shooting speaking engagements all the time. Right. I'm shooting conferences. I'm seeing people speak. And I'm hearing into the, the local people, I'm hearing them, oh man, they didn't pay me, they don't do this, whatever. And so I'm hearing all the murmuring because maybe the, they're doing speaking for the city, city's paying me, but they're complaining that they didn't get paid or this is happening, I'm shooting for a county function or this function. And they're saying this and I'm saying, man, if I'm gonna do this, I'm not going through all that foolishness. Yeah. I'm gonna do it this way. Now, have I spoken for free? Yes, plenty of times, especially at schools. Yeah, the babies right. sometimes are off limits for me. I'm good with, with taking care of my babies. Right. But when I'm dealing with grownups, it's always a bad. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not I'm not playing those games with y'all. Like, cause I my for my thing is this. I'm look, I don't need that much exposure. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't need that much exposure. I've been I've been exposed for the last 12, 15 years of my life. So I, I don't really need that exposure. Wait, wait, time. wait, Jay, stop, man. <laughs> This dude is so deep. I love it. But it's so practical because you hear that oftentimes. Well, we can't pay you, but there'll be there'll be 400 people there. This will be great exposure. I'm like, I'm good. I, I, 70,000 people a month see me. I don't need no more exposure. <laughs> but if it's going to be 400 people there, you can't get a dollar a piece. No. <laughs> you can't get $5 a piece of these one of them because they paid to be there for you. That's what I'm saying, Jay. So, they, so you mean to tell me they paid you $75. Right. And you can't scratch five out of that 75 for me. 
brother. That there's a there's a there's a problem there. Now, when you talk about business, I, the heat always goes up in the studio when I talk to Jay Halim. Go to Jay Halim or I won't starve. Get his four books. The brother is a phenomenal. I mean, I we've we've been talking about just doing pop ups just because uh, because we just iron sharpens iron. And we will just we just want to help people. Like my speaking yeah. my speaking training, brother. I'm doing that for free because it's gonna be online. And you know, I told people, listen, there's not even gonna be a catch at the back of the room. I ain't gonna try to funnel you. I ain't gonna try to get your information to spam you. I just want to try to bless you. Maybe look up under your hood and say there's some things you might want to tweak right here. But here's one thing I want to ask you related to that. Is it a one size fits all approach? To being an entrepreneur or a business owner, nah, not not even a little bit, <laughs> not even a little bit. Is is no way that, and, and I think that's just what everybody think, you know, and that's what keeping them at the self employed situation and not actually being an entrepreneur. Ah, because all everybody's thing is just I don't want to work for somebody, and so what it is that I whatever I can do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for myself. Right, entrepreneurship is not selfish; it's selfless. You know, because when you are an entrepreneur, you have to be trying to solve someone's problem other than your own. Mm. You know, so the only problem you have is you pissed off at the job. You don't want to go to work. You want to work for yourself. You want to take care of your pocket. Mm -hmm. But real businesses solve problems. So what, what is a problem? Maybe it's your problem too, but to make it a business, you got to solve it for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So if you are, your clothes don't solve a problem for someone else, then it's just something you want to do, even mine. Yeah. But mine is but mine is, is a partnership with the actual business. So if you've been blessed by I Won't Starve Academy, or if you've been blessed by my coaching and my training um, through J. Halim LLC, then you should wear a J. Halim shirt to say, hey, I believe in what's going on. But That's it's right. not solving a problem. It's a clarion call and saying, hey, I respect what's going on there. If you've been blessed by my words on YouTube, things of that nature. So that's what that is. But clothing is not solving a problem, but yeah. it is a half of, a, of 1% of black people that make money with the government and have government contracts. So because I am a consultant that helps minority individuals get government contracts, I'm solving a problem. Right. You know, I Won't Starve Academy has been created so that certain people can start their businesses that look like you and I for free. Mm. They can get this training that people pay me thousands of dollars for, for free through my 501c3. Yeah. That's solving a problem because I know that if you are smart, start, everybody in the hood think that when you start a business, you got money, but these are the brokest people in the world. <laughs> business owners. Yeah. Who business owners are broke. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? And so they don't have the money to pay for your $500 this or your thousand dollar that and and they don't really believe in themselves and they don't give up five dollars they don't have it right so i have business methods to get it out of the people who i need to get it from so that i can still take care of my people because it ain't what you get is what you do with it and yeah. you know what i mean so if it don't matter who gave me the money i'm putting it back into into my own community that's a good that's, that's a solving good. the problem that's a good that's a good point ladies and gentlemen. I want you to understand what he just said there. You got you got to think about it. Um I did a three night series. The third night is concluding tomorrow. And in my state, cuz you know I'm in the I'm in the old north state, bro. I'm in North Carolina, baby. <laughs> and um there is a problem here in this state. Would you like to know what it is, Jay? I would love to know. There is a shortage, a major shortage of foster parents in this state so mm. much so so much so jay that the kids that are being extracted from their home because of abuse molestation and neglect there's no place for them to go so here's where wow. they're putting them they're putting them in county jails for for sleeping they're putting them in psych psychiatric facilities when they don't need psychiatric services and they're letting them sleep in dss offices a big old USA Today write up about my state. And they said that the there's been a decline in there's 12,000 kids that need a home and only 5,000 available foster parents. That sounds to me like a need, brother. It's, that's, and that's a big need. Bro. And that's what we need to have the conversations about. Like yeah. who 
Who's creating that service? You, you know, here's what here's what has happened. The the people the people I'm reaching out to about this topic, they're in the Queen City, Charlotte. They said mm-hmm. that prior to the pandemic, they could get in churches, they could get in various community centers and talk to folks about becoming foster parents. Now, now that everything's back and the dust is settled, nobody cares no more. They can't hardly get in nowhere to talk about it. They need someone to help them raise some awareness about foster fostering kids, right? And I told them, I said, listen, we need to sit down and have a round table because who better to help you guys get this message out than a guy that was in foster care for 18 years. I know mm-hmm. the value of foster foster parenting and I know what it did for it. Saved my, my foster parents saved my life. I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. I, but I will, I will watch those people in the Queen City um, and make sure they don't have Louis Vuitton bags and <laughs> Louis Vuitton's on and they say that they need it because that will, that those with, with one of those bags will be a, a couple news um, articles or right. magazine articles and those shoes will be that too. See, we yeah. got to get down to the nitty gritty because everybody said we always, we need, and especially uh, and our believers, because our believers don't never want to, you know, exert no no finances and put out no money to make nothing happen. You know what well, I'm saying? Go ahead, the brother. Lord, Lord, bring it. No, the Lord put you here for you to do it. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The Bible says you would do greater works when I go to the Father. So it's time for you to work. You know what I'm saying? And, and, so- that's, and that's what that that brings my full circle point. Because when somebody asks me, well, how do I, you know, I mean, like this is why I asked the question, is it a one size fits all? No. You know, I say it is a process. I think entrepreneurship is a process. It's 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 a process, man. You know what I mean? Like what you say, hey, look, you ain't gonna open your little uh a cookie dough shop tomorrow I'll be making 15,000 a month. So you're going to have to keep staying over here at Starbucks and making their cookies while you making yours at, at night. Right. But it's a yeah. process. You stay yeah. devoted and committed to making your cookies while Starbucks is still paying you. But, but my point to the, to the question is my story, my audience may not be your story and your audience. So it can't. It's not a one size fits all. Tell me how I start getting seven thousand dollars a speech. I, I I I need to know what you're doing right now. What are you? What's your message? What's your marketing? What? It, it's not just what am I doing. I want to know what you're doing, and then we can do look at some forensics and say, okay, if this is your target audience, if this is your passion, then maybe you've just been speaking over them, or you've been speaking at them, but you've not been speaking to them. Nobody, no, you're not solving any problems in that area. So they don't, they don't feel they need you. The problem is it's just really not that deep. If you tell somebody you're a speaker, you should have something to show that you actually are a speaker. You should have some type of video sure. to hear that or you got, you have, now you have YouTube. You can sit here and talk into the computer for a couple of months so people can hear what you, your philosophies are, whatever the case may be. Right. And the thing that people don't do is they don't ask for the money. And also from an integrity perspective. So as a photographer, I remember meeting a young lady and she said, when you start taking weddings photos, because weddings are so important because you don't get it back. Like it, it's not no do overs Like it's not, all right, well, if you mess up on Saturday, this wedding, that's it, right? So <laughs> that's why they pay so much, right? And they charge so much, right? And so they're saying, if you know you're brand new, you shouldn't be charging them three, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, right? It's an integrity piece to that. So if you are new and you need to learn how to be an orator in front of people, yes, you should do it for free. Right. But it's a, it's a system to it though. You don't just do it for free. Just being, you know, just, Oh, I'll just do anything for anybody. Okay. Who do you want to speak to? Make sure you're speaking to the people you want to speak to right? and make sure it's people who are going to appreciate it. Like, you know, I'm going to, for me, my free has always been with the babies. Right. Like if it's the babies is a good chance to get me in that situation because I'll go, I'm not worried about asking for no money for them. They're right. going to appreciate me coming. They're going to appreciate what I'm doing. But, oh, the, the easiest place to get me to charge is a church. <laughs> go ahead. The easiest place for me, to, for me to charge. Did y'all hear that? J- it's Reverend easier Jay to me to charge a church than it is a major conference. Uh-huh. Because they have the expectation of getting something for free. Ooh. Oh, man. Did y'all, my God have mercy. Would you say that, please, one more time? They have the expectation of getting something for free. So I, I'm going to, those are the first people I'm charging. I'm, I'm, and look, and I'm getting real down to the nitty gritty with it. Let's when go. I, when I'm charging them. Yeah. Because, 
and and that's all it is. But you got to ask for the money. You know how many people have spoken, have did that that service, even if it ain't speaking, it's something else. That service, they don't want to ask for the money. Just ask. Now, what's going to happen to you, right? Because everybody's going to call you when you're doing it for free. Yeah. For like a year, maybe six months, but definitely about a year, maybe. It's going to get dry for you with that. It is. Because it's a shift that has to happen. It does. And it's going to be people saying, well, so-and-so charged. CL a little too high. I would call CL, but I know he's going to charge. I will. And then next thing you know, it's going to be one person that's going to come around. Well, I know he's going to charge, but let me negotiate with him at least. Hello? That's the opening door right there. That's the now, open door. I yeah. want you. I know you sent me a $1,000 invoice, but I got 700 I got 600 Can you work with me? And I got three events coming up, so you'll be able to do all three of those events at that price. You know what? I got you. I'll be there. Right. I'll be there. And then you kill it, and you show love to that person. Right. And keep showing love to that community, that whoever supported you. What and happens next, next time? Going to do it. What happens next time? That's right. And then the next person is going to do it. Yes. And then, it, and then it's, now everybody knows that you speak. See, when I go and talk to people, the first thing they say is, how much? Right. It, it's no, it's not going to be a, you know, are you doing this for free? Like they automatically going to ask me, well, how much are you going to charge? Now the question is, can you afford it or not? That's exactly right. Let me, let me, it, but let me tell you something. I, I can't believe me and my brother decided to only do this for an hour. I need him for like three hours. I, I want you to clear your schedule. Cause we go we this. This is exhaustive, bro. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling something in my spirit. you you make a great point. Tabari Wallace the guy who wrote the forward in my book. He is the first principal who gave me a speaking gig at a school where he paid me, right? He only paid me, I think it was like 150 bucks. So <laughs> I wasn't I I busted out of the scenes, but all the other schools had said no, right? And I went to his office and I said, look, bro, I just want to try to help. And uh, he said, well, this is what I can do for you. The first time I went there, he said, I can't pay you. I said, all right, it's cool. Well, when he had me back after the first time, he said, look, I can get you 150. Well, every time I went back, the increments got much higher, right? Yeah. And he never, ever asked me again. Once he wrote me that first check, he never asked me again, is this on the house? Never once. Never once. In fact, I just went back to speak at a Black History thing for his school, and they... They reached out to him because he ain't even there no more. They said, hey, uh, can we get King? He said, well, let me try to talk to him because he ain't free. He, ta he told <laughs> him, you know what I mean? <laughs> and to, to full circle, I had Tabari help me with my um, launch party for the book. Mm -hmm. And I, when you, we're friends. We're like brothers, like me and you, right? He only lives 30 minutes away from me. And I said, um, we're going to take care of you, too. I don't want you to think you come and doing this on the house for your time, your gas, your money, your dime, your expertise. I said, we're not, we're not expecting you to come do this for nothing. Even if we homeboys, this is still your profession, bro. And, yeah. and, and man, he sent me a note of gratitude. You know, he was like, I wasn't expecting this, blah, 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 blah. And I said, but I, this is what I expect. When, yeah. when, I, when I'm out, I, I don't expect everybody to run me all over town for, for soggy chicken dinners. I, I, I don't expect that anymore. <laughs> and you know what I mean? The, what, can you see it, Jay? The roll yeah. and the green beans and the yeah, chicken. Yeah, and the macaroni <laughs> and the chicken. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and the macaroni. In the styrofoam, in the styrofoam joint. Man, yeah, you know. Thank you, thank you for coming. You know, and you, and you done, you done, you done brought the house down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but. It was an offering taken up, though. Yeah. It was an offering taken up, and you didn't get 10% of it. Uh-oh. Y'all better be quiet now. <laughs> oh, no. I, look, I, I want all the smoke. So it is what it is. Like, because, because if we're going to do it right, you know, Jesus turned over the tables. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's still modern-day Pharisees and Sadducees running around here. And yeah. so, you know, you, you still, you still got to go ahead and, and, and address them. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, the, the lights don't come on without a collection. That's so true. what are we doing? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not a, it's not a service that happens without a collection. I ha I haven't seen one yet. <laughs> well, I me... haven't seen one yet. So <laughs> there it is. Hey, that brother need $25 for gas. Yep. Something. You know what I'm saying? Like you can, you know, the car don't run off chicken dinner. <laughs> I might can, <laughs> but the car don't. <laughs> 
the car don't. You know what I'm saying? So you can put no chicken grease over there, bro. Yeah. So at the end of the day, and even the sacrament don't work. So <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Um, we 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 just gotta like with this entrepreneurship piece. Yeah. It's gonna it can't be a one size fit all scenario because we all different. Our journeys are different. Right. What we want to do is different. But no matter what you're trying to go into, it's a different walk right. in that space. So no, it's not a one size fit all. It's just that we have to continue to fight and um, tell our people that there's a difference between creating a job for yourself and actually starting a business. It's a different level of responsibility. We have to stop being so selfish. Yeah. We have to start looking at our community as a whole and figure out what is missing in our community. How can we better our community? Not just pick up and move to somebody else's community. And I'm talking to myself because I've done that. I'm in Vegas right now and I just left South Carolina. I probably could have did something better there. Even though I, I put it down the last 10 years I was there. Yeah. I definitely know I, I upgraded my community, but yeah. I probably could have did some more, right? And so I we got to be like, okay, it's not a dry cleaners. Don't wait and see if somebody's going to get it. Put the dry cleaners there. It's not a hospital there. Let's put our money, put a hospital there. If it's not a um, grocery store at the corner, we got to go so far away from it. Let's get together and get a grocery store. Let's do all of that stuff right now. And then that's entrepreneurship. That's the oh business. That's creating what we need to create. Oh my goodness, Jay. Do you know it's 356, dog? Yeah, we got we got it. We gotta go. Wait, but, but I got I gotta get so much, brother. I gotta get one last question. Can I get go one? Ahead, last go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This is this is the this is the this is the grand slam. This is the three two pitch right here, dude. Um in the book that you just released, hold it up. I'm the consummate promoter, brother. I'm like Don <laughs> King up in this joint. This is corner. corner. Okay. We really needed to survive the entrepreneurial fight. Can you give us one nugget from out of there what somebody needs to survive the entrepreneurial fight? Tell us, tell us a tip that you gave in that book. Wow, man, there's a bunch. Um, <laughs> it's one. I just need one, bro. Well, for everybody, something that, that fits everybody is that you know, you in this biz, in this book, you you need to know that you can't do this alone. Entrepreneurship, you can't do it alone. Self-employment, yeah. But entrepreneurship, you can't do it alone. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for somebody to just say, I'm going to go out on my unilateral wet dream and think I'm going to make millions of dollars and change the world and everything like that. You got to have a team. You got to have people around. You have got to have a support system. That's why I called it business corner. You have to know the people that's in your corner, why they're there and what they're doing. I read a beautiful book and it said that um, the people on your bus you know, um, they have to be motivated. They have to be motivated already because if they're not, they're the wrong people on the bus. You're not going to go anywhere. And so you got to have the right people in your corner that's with you that believe in what you're doing and they see what you're doing mm -hmm. and they're going to fall in line and, and, and be able to push you to, to that success. That's why businesses are failing because as soon as somebody start a business, their mother's telling them, hey, you crazy. Don't do that. What are you doing? You have to keep this job. Don't do this. They don't even have to be um, leaving the job. That's what they're telling them. Their wife or their husband. What are you talking about? I got to sit back and I can't get the, the new Louis bag or I can't take trips all the time while we bring this business. Um, their friends are turning their back on them and saying, talking about them. Oh, he got that bit, that little business thing again. That the little business. members are saying, oh, man, so, um, brother so-and-so going to ask us to help him with his business again. Uh, and it's all of that. So you're alone in the beginning of this thing. And that's why you can't survive a year. That's why you can't survive six months. That's why you can't survive a few years because you are alone. Right. But if the next person and the next person can see the vision within your eyes and more importantly, see their vision within your eyes because everybody not going to be a visionary. Right. But if they can see themselves in your vision and they get behind you, it'll change the world. It'll change your world. We all have our own world. We live in one together, but we all have our own world. When they say the world about the end, somebody's in every day, but somebody's change every day. Somebody's grow every day. And, it, and the people who are around you, the people are in your corner means the most in your world. And it means that if you're going to be survive, if you're going to be able to survive or thrive. I'm going to tell you what, y'all. Uh, he just spoke something pretty powerful. I was thinking about my, my best friend on the planet, Greg Smith. Greg been with me since 2009, Jay. And I don't I don't know if he's for what I'm for. I don't know if he's against what I'm against, but I do know one thing. 
That brother is for me. Yeah, and that's what you need, we, man. Bro, we done brought we done brought some people on that looking at the shiny stuff and want a dollar. Oh man, you wear suits and blah blah blah. I said it ain't even about that, man. That man shows up to the jail with me every single month. Right after he get out of work, he shows up to the jail. We do two sessions. He don't he don't even speak. He don't say a word. He's not missed one time. Yeah. And and the he been that's why he in the corner. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. everybody needs a Greg Smith in their life. Man, that is so powerful. I can't wait to chop this up and get a uh, hundred thousand views on this reel. <laughs> Jay, 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 Jay makes it happen. He brings the knowledge. We don't know when the next one's gonna be, but when the next one is, y'all need to tune in to it because it's always good. Uh, we, we're going to talk about generational wealth next time. We're going to talk about getting your house in order with your life insurance and all that kind of stuff. We got to talk about that, too, in our community, Jay, because we struggling yeah. in that regard. Woo. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Hey, thank yeah. you again for giving me an um, opportunity on your platform, brother. Well, this was our platform today. This is a joint, <laughs> this is a joint session of Congress, dog. So, hey, Jay... Man. What? It's always a pleasure, man. It's always a pleasure. I'm glad. I'm glad that God brought us together. My crazy looking kangaroo cousin hooked us up and got us together too. You up for that one? Oh, she know. That's her nickname. She a kangaroo. So love you, Nisi. I love and appreciate my man Jay Halim. I think I said his name right almost the whole day. The whole and I, time, and I love it. <laughs> I love just, it, brother. Just go to jhalim.com or I won't starve. dot com. Until the next time, brother Jay. We'll holler at you, man. Take care. All right, have a good one, brother. All right, later, dude. So that was it, y'all. I'm going to just give a closing remark here uh, with my friend Jay. He, such a great man. I mean, just the just the stuff that he drops in just a short amount of time. Isn't that it? I'm telling y'all, that's something. So I want you to go to his website. And I do believe that. Like he talked about Nisi always lifting up other people. I do believe that. That God is, is going to bless us because we bless other people and we lift other people up it don't always have to be about me and my story it could be about somebody else's story and uh, i feel like this brother has tapped into something that uh when i see when i seen the turnaround in his life i said this is the kind of person i want to align myself with and so uh from eight dollars an hour to six figure income that's that resonates with me so until next time ladies and gentlemen i am going my son said do you got your tr track suit ready i said yes the track suit is the green white oak suit that I have worn ever since Chris was a freshman. It's a sweatsuit that I wear to every game, every band competition, the same one. I've been wearing it all these years. And tonight, I'll be wearing it to senior night for Jay's senior night at baseball. It's coming to an end. Just a few short weeks and my son will be graduated. And then he'll go on try to make his life. So that's why I do this, man. Because just trying to show my kids, first off, this is why I wrote this book, my kids and my family that, hey, man, no matter what you've gone through, you can still make it. And bringing somebody on like Jay Halim says the same thing, man, no matter what, no matter your felony, no matter your background, no matter your $8 an hour job, you still can make it. So be a blessing to him and go get his books at I won't starve .com or Hit him up for some coaching at jhalim.com. I said his name right. I was saying his name wrong all the time, but I just can't remember nobody's name. All right. Love y'all. Peace. Have a good day.